Today's video will share with you how to make probiotic rich plant milk kefir, plus all the ins and outs that are essential to know. What's fantastic about plant milk kefir is that you can make it either using water kefir grains or milk kefir grains, and I'm gonna show you both ways. Depending on where you live in the world, how you pronounce it will vary such as kefir, kefir, and kefir. We're all talking about the same thing, so pronunciation is not important. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. Section one, the kefir grains. Both water and milk kefir grains are gelatinous, asymmetrical pods formed by both good yeast and good bacteria in a polysaccharide matrix, which is what holds them together. Water kefir grains are translucent and, under the right conditions, originate from natural sugary water-based liquids, hence the name water kefir grains. Milk kefir grains are whitish cream in color and, under the right conditions, originate from raw animal milk, hence the name milk kefir grains. Both water and milk kefir grains ferment the plant milk and both taste good and have probiotics, but they're not identical. Even though the grains have some similarities, they have significant differences in structure, microbial content. In other words, different probiotic profiles of each create different flavors and different fermentation characteristics of the finished kefir. These are my water kefir grains. I keep them stored in sugar water in my fridge and pull them out when I want to use them. And just so that you can get a better look of what's inside the jar, I'll strain them out. When I bought these grains, they came in just a little container like this and have since multiplied into what you see here. In the upcoming demonstrations, each time you see me add water kefir grains to the plant milk kefir, I'll be pulling them from what I call their home jar as seen here. And when I'm done with them, I'll give them a rinse to get the plant milk residue off and then I'll return them to their home jar stored in the sugar water in the fridge. These are my milk kefir grains. When not in use, I keep them stored in cow's milk in the fridge since milk kefir grains require lactose in order to survive and remain healthy for the long term. I simply pull them out from the fridge when I'm going to use them, and in the upcoming demonstrations, each time you see me add milk kefir grains to the plant milk, I'll be scooping them out from their home jar as seen here. If you're not a vegan and you're not opposed to milk residue coming into contact with your plant milk, then you can put the grains directly into the plant milk that's going to be fermented. And if you are vegan, remove the grains from the cow's milk like this, except rinse away the dairy milk residue under cold water. Why not just use only water kefir grains for plant milk kefir? Well, you can, but here are some advantages to using the milk kefir grains as well. One, you may already have milk kefir grains because you're already making the milk kefir and you don't wanna buy more grains. Two, milk kefir grains have a different probiotic profile than the water kefir grains. Not only will the taste of the plant milk be different, which you might like it better, but you can also make the ultimate probiotic drink using both types of grains, water and milk, because the different species of probiotics in each grain have different health benefits. And if you want to take consuming probiotic diversity to the next level, use both water and milk kefir grains. And FYI, if you do want to make both, don't combine the grains neither while in storage in their home jar nor during the act of fermentation. Always keep them separate. Only after what's called first fermentation can you combine the fermented plant milks. And I'll explain what first and second fermentation are in the upcoming section seven. Section two, the measurements. The measurements provided are for a quart or liter sized jar filled with any type of plant milk, nut, seed, or coconut. If using water kefir grains, you'll need two tablespoons of grains, 36 to 40 grams. If using milk kefir grains, you'll need only one tablespoon of grains, 20 to 25 grams. Milk kefir grains ferment stronger, which is why you can use less of them compared to the water kefir grain measurement. You will add one tablespoon or 18 grams of cane sugar. Use a cane sugar that is naturally tan in color, indicating it has not been bleached. More sugars that can also be used at the same measurements are maple syrup, molasses, brown sugar, agave, or honey. 
Just keep in mind that the flavors of the sugar source will have an effect on the final taste of the kefir and possibly the rate of fermentation as well, which I'll cover in the upcoming section seven. And a final note about adding the sugar is that without a glucose source of food for the kefir grains, the plant milk will not ferment. Therefore, do not use sweeteners like these listed here since they do not contain glucose. Section three, nut milk kefir. You can make the nut milk kefir from either fresh nuts or boxed milks from the store. I'll demonstrate the fresh homemade nut milk here and cover boxed milks in section six. I'm going to demonstrate by making almond milk, but these instructions can be applied to any type of nut. Soak overnight one cup or 170 grams of raw, unsalted almonds or another type of nut. The next day, strain and rinse the nuts. Add to the blender. Next, add three and a quarter cups of water to the blender. Blend on high for about two minutes. Do not add any flavorings if you're going to use this nut milk for kefir making because it will affect the fermentation. I'll explain further in the upcoming section seven. Strain the nut milk through a fine mesh nut milk bag like this one. As for the pulp, you can discard it, compost it, or find a creative way to use it. Back to the plant milk. Look at this gorgeous homemade nut milk. Fill the jar to about here, leaving a two inch, five centimeter headspace. This will allow for the expansion that will occur during fermentation without overflow. Add one tablespoon, 18 grams sugar to the jar, then give it a quick stir to mix. I'm going to demonstrate using both water and milk kefir grains. Add two tablespoons of water kefir grains, 36 to 40 grams. Place the lid on the jar, loose or tight. It won't matter much since the water kefir grains won't generate much effervescence at this stage. I'll discuss more on effervescence in section seven coming up. For the milk kefir grains, scoop out a tablespoon, 20 to 25 grams. And in this demonstration, I'll rinse them first and then add. In other upcoming demonstrations, I'll show you how to do it straight from jar to jar without rinsing so you can see both ways. Place a lid on the jar, loose if you want less effervescence, tight if you want more. And since milk kefir grains ferment stronger than water kefir grains, you can generate a little more effervescence during first fermentation than what you can with the water kefir grains. And remember, I will explain first and second fermentation in the upcoming section seven. Leave the plant milk with the added kefir grains on the counter at room temperature overnight. It's the next day. The first thing you notice is the separation of the nut milk pulp and water. This is 100% normal and to be expected. Let's take a closer look at the one made with the milk kefir grains and afterwards the one with the water kefir grains. The plant milk will form a pulp head on the top and the grains will float up and intermingle. To remove the grains, pour the kefir through a fine mesh strainer. With a spatula, gently push the creaminess around until only the grains remain. Rinse the grains under cool water to remove the nut milk sediment. Okay, placing them into a jar of fresh cow's milk. Keep the cow's milk jar with the grains in the refrigerator until you're ready to use the grains again. By keeping the grains stored in the cow's milk when not in use, that is what will help them keep them alive and healthy for years to come. Back to this almond milk kefir. Fermented plant milk will have a soury tart flavor, which indicates a successful fermentation. To store, place a tight lid on the jar and transfer it to the refrigerator where it will last about one week before it becomes too sour for pleasurable drinking. Now let's take a look at the almond milk fermented with water kefir grains. We can see the separation of the pulp from the water and down at the bottom are the water kefir grains. They sink rather than float up to the top. As we look inside, we can again see that thick creamy head has formed. This is normal and to be expected. Pour the contents through a fine mesh strainer. With a spatula, gently push the creaminess around until only the grains remain. Then you can run them under the cool water until they show clear again. Place them back into their home jar in the refrigerator until you're ready to use them again in the future. Pour the nut milk kefir back into the jar. Take a taste test. It will have a soury tart flavor, yet more mild than if it had been fermented by milk kefir grains. That soury tart flavor indicates a successful fermentation in the kefir. 
To store, place a tight lid on the jar and transfer it to the refrigerator where it will last about seven days before it becomes too sour for pleasurable drinking. Over time, plant milk kefir of any kind will separate in the fridge. This is normal. Before you drink it, simply give it a shake to reincorporate. And as a reminder, I'll share with you more on the right timing of when to add flavor and how to increase effervescence in section seven. For now, we're moving on to our next plant milk, coconut. First, please allow me a brief moment to say thank you for watching my video. I put so much time and effort into them so that I can supercharge you with knowledge. I would just be so grateful if you bought me a cup of tea. Your $5 contribution helps me keep doing what I do. Section four, coconut kefir. There are many ways to make coconut milk. I'm going to cover three of them, starting with canned coconut. Empty the contents and give it a stir, working out the chunks the best you can. Pour into a quart or liter sized jar, no blender needed. The pro about using canned coconut is that it will make a really creamy kefir that is heavenly good. But the con is the price. My cans of coconut milk were $5 each and one can only fills the jar halfway. So you would need two cans to fill the jar and $10 for one jar of kefir is expensive. If your budget allows for two cans per jar, then go for it. And if not, you can add water to fill the jar. Even with the added water, it will still make a delicious coconut kefir. Add the sugar, quick stir, add the kefir grains of your choice, place a loose or tight lid on the jar and allow it to sit overnight. The next day, you'll see the separation has occurred. The thick head has formed on top. Strain out the grains. I'll rinse these off and put them back into their home jar of milk until next time. And by the way, you can tell when the grains love the medium that they're being fermented in because they'll exponentially grow overnight. Both water and milk kefir grains for some reason love coconut milk and do really well in it. My water kefir grains here doubled and tripled in size. Look how big this water grain grew overnight. It's huge. I took a taste test and confirmed that the canned coconut milk kefir turned out delectable. Place a lid on the jar and store in the refrigerator where it will last about seven to 10 days. So how do you know if the coconut milk kefir fermented? Same answer as before. It will have a tangy sour taste to it and perhaps a mild effervescence if the lid was on tight. Stronger if you used milk kefir grains, milder if you use the water kefir grains. If no fermentation takes place, it will taste like plain, flat coconut milk. Coconut milk making option number two. Next, we have a fresh coconut. In Montana, where I live, this is as good as it gets, and the cost for this single coconut was $7, so it's not very economical. But if you live in the tropics and fresh coconuts are an abundant, inexpensive resource, that's wonderful. And FYI, this is not a how to open coconuts video, so I won't give much details there. First, you'll puncture the soft area of the top of the coconut and pour the coconut water into the jar. I got about this much coconut water, and next I'll scrape the flesh out from both halves. I recruited my husband's help and he whacked it open for me. Place the meat in the same jar with the coconut water, then add enough water to fill the jar. Blend on high for a minute or two. Pour the contents back into the jar and don't worry if the coconut meat still has some chunks. Add the sugar, stir, add your choice of kefir grain, lid on and overnight on the counter. It's the next day and the separation has occurred as well as that thick head on top. And we'll do all the same method of straining out the grains. Pick out any little coconut chunks, rinse the grains and return them to their home jar. Absolutely take a taste test. The fresh coconut water blended with the coconut meat tastes fantabulous. And this milk is extra abundant in electrolytes due to the coconut water. And yes, if you have lots of fresh or store-bought coconut water, you can use all coconut water, skipping the milk making. The method and the measurements are all the same. Water kefir grains or milk kefir grains, all good. Just remember to always return the milk kefir grains to the cow's milk in the fridge so that they can get their lactose fix and remain strong and healthy. Coconut milk making method number three, using dried coconut. This is the most economical option if you don't live in the tropics. 
Add to a blender anywhere from a cup and a half to two cups of shredded coconut, sweetened or unsweetened, organic or not. All versions work well. Add three and a half cups of warm water and allow the coconut to soak in that water for about 10 minutes to initiate rehydration. After the soak time, blend on high for about two minutes. Pour the contents into the nut milk bag and strain until no more liquid comes out. As for the pulp, you can discard, compost, or find a creative way to use it. Pour the coconut milk into the jar. Add the sugar, stir, then add your choice of grains. Lid on and leave to sit on the counter overnight. I did both grains, but since I demonstrated last time with the milk kefir grains, I'll do this one with water kefir grains. Strain out the grains. The coconut and the water kefir grains separate themselves for the most part, so it's pretty easy to scoop them out. And FYI, the coconut fat will stick more to the milk kefir grains and won't separate as simply as the water kefir grains shown here. But this is the only case when making the coconut milk from the dried coconut, not the canned or the fresh, you won't have that problem. I'll rinse these and return them to their home jar. Pushing the fatty coconut pulp through won't go so well as is, so do this. Pour the milk back and forth through the strainer, working the pulp each time. Do this back and forth about three or four times and it will eventually work through. Pour off and store as usual in the fridge. And by the way, coconut milk made from dried coconut, mwah, also so delicious. Section five, seed milk kefir. There are so many different types of seeds that can be transformed into plant milk that I can't cover them all in this video. So I'm going to give you a visual demonstration of hemp seed milk and then give recipe measurements for two other common seed milks that I think you will enjoy. Shelled or hulled hemp seeds have a soft interior called hemp hearts. Any brand of hemp hearts will work. Hemp hearts, by the way, are a rich source of nutrients, protein, and omega-3 fats. For a hemp seed milk, you will need one half cup of hemp hearts plus three and a half cups of water. Blend on high for two minutes. Strain through the nut milk bag until the pulp runs dry. Pour into a quart or liter sized jar. Add the sugar, quick stir, choice of kefir grain, and allow to sit on the counter overnight. It's the next day. Strain out the grains, gently work through any remaining liquid, leaving behind only the grains. Rinse off the seed milk before returning them to their home jar. Pour the seed milk kefir back into the jar and feel free to enjoy a glass now. Place the lid on securely and store in the refrigerator. In segment seven, I'll explain the right timing to add the flavor to the plant milk kefir, as well as how to increase the effervescence if flavoring and more bubbles are something that you would like. For sunflower seed milk, use one cup raw, hulled, and non-salted nor toasted sunflower seeds to three and a half cups of water. Blend on high for two minutes and strain with a nut milk bag. That's all there is to it in making the milk. You know what to do from here to transform it into kefir. For flaxseed milk, use one third cup of raw, brown, or golden flax seeds plus three and a quarter to four cups of cool water. Blend for only 45 seconds, then immediately strain through the nut milk bag. If you've worked with flax seeds before, then you know that they swell and congeal quickly once they come in contact with water. It will become challenging to strain the flaxseed milk through the bag because of this rapid congealing. So work fast with this milk. From here, you know what to do to transform it into kefir. Section six, boxed plant milk kefirs. Yes, you can make kefir with box milks. And because there are lots of varieties out there from plain to being flavored to additional sugar added, not added, these variables will affect the rate of fermentation, which I'll discuss in the next section seven. But the end note is you can use any version of boxed milk. The measurements to initially begin with are the same as the homemade milks, at least to start. You'll need to watch the next segment where I share how to adjust things after you see the fermentation behavior exhibited with whichever boxed milk you use. Here are a couple of other notes when using boxed milk. 
It won't separate as quickly because it's so heavily processed. So just be aware that nothing is wrong per se if you don't see box milk separate like what you do with the homemade plant milk. And be aware that sometimes, not always, but at times, box milk will be quite stubborn to ferment. In this situation, box milk may need more days on the counter before full fermentation has commenced. Fermentation can be identified by the flavor. When the box milk has become official fermented kefir, it will have a sour, tangy flavor. The sour is not caused by spoiling, but by the good probiotics releasing lactic acid into the milk. So if by the next day, it still tastes like plain plant milk, it has not fermented. Keep it on the counter for another day and taste test again. Repeat if needed until that sour flavor comes through. This box coconut milk I used was very stubborn. It took three days before I could taste the fermentation, but it did eventually ferment. And this box milk never fermented after trying for five days. Other box milks that I've used fermented just fine. So just be aware that it is a case by case scenario. Section seven, adjusting the rate of fermentation, adding additional flavoring and effervescence. Three things will affect the rate of fermentation of the kefir. The amount of sugar added, the amount of kefir grains added, and the environmental temperature. If you live somewhere very warm, the kefir will ferment at a faster rate. This could cause over fermentation while sitting on the counter overnight, which is too fast. Do this to slow down the rate of fermentation with the next batch you make. Either add less sugar, add less kefir grains, move it somewhere cooler, or all of the above. If you live somewhere cool and the plant kefir is not fermenting quickly enough while sitting on the counter overnight, meaning it still tastes like plain milk the next day, then do this to speed up the rate of fermentation. Either add more sugar, add more kefir grains, move it somewhere warmer, or all of the above. Experimenting will need to be done on your part, so take it batch by batch and make adjustments as needed. But if it's perfect as is, don't fix what isn't broken and keep on with the standard measurements. Adding additional flavoring. When you watch how to make plant milk videos, they typically include flavorings like vanilla, maple syrup, fruit of some sort, or more sugar. But we're not just making plant milk, we're fermenting it and that's the game changer. If you really want flavorings, fruit, vanilla, or additional sweeteners, here's when to add them. Pour yourself the amount you're going to drink into a separate glass, then add the additional flavoring. Don't add it to the main kefir jar, add a single serving of the flavorings to the single serving of kefir you're about to drink. Now you don't have to worry about over fermentation. Increasing effervescence. When the kefir grains are initially added to the plant milk and allowed to sit overnight on the counter, that is called first fermentation. When the kefir grains are strained out and then the plant milk is allowed to sit for several more hours, even overnight for a second time, that is called second fermentation. The effervescence of those tiny champagne-like bubbles can be either non-existent or quite mild with first fermentation. Therefore, if you want to amp up the bubbles, do this. Complete first fermentation as normal. Pour the plant milk kefir back into the jar and place the lid on tightly once more. Allow the kefir to sit an additional six to 10 more hours on the countertop as the second fermentation without the grains. This round of fermentation will be even stronger than the first. So long as the lid is kept fast and tight, the carbon dioxide bubbles created by the yeast will be trapped inoculating your kefir with tons of fizzy bubbles. Here's an example with a homemade flax milk that has just undergone second fermentation. I'll give it a shake and then I'm gonna put the microphone in there so you can hear all those little bubbles going crazy. Lid back on and store in the refrigerator. FYI, second fermentation can also expand right out of the jar because second fermentation is stronger than the first. So keep an eye on it. If you're still with me, then you are a kefir diehard who really wants to learn, and I so love making these videos for people just like you. I've got an entire playlist of kefir videos, so check it out right here. Plus, my channel is dedicated to fermenting, so I've got a full playlist of vegetable fermentation recipes 
right here. You can find the links to those playlists also in the video description, in addition to links to buy kefir grains, both water and milk, if you're interested. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.